Annyeonghaseyo, Yoribun. Uh, it's Jenny once again with some wines. I am very excited to be talking with today uh, Gordana Josevich, who is head of wine at the Atlantis Royal Dubai. Um, they recently were named number nine in the world by World's 50 Best Hotels, um, which is a huge accomplish accomplishment, excuse me, for your entire team, for you. Um, that's just incredible news that just recently came out. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I know you're very busy. You obviously have a lot of really great wisdom to share, and I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, it's, it's great to see you, Jen. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> I know it has <laughs> been. I know I haven't I seen you in person. This, uh, live. I wish, uh, I was in Korea. I would love to do this live oh. next time. Yes, exactly. next time. Yes, next time. Either we'll do this in Korea, or I'll finally get to see you in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. be fun too. That would be oh, fantastic. Yeah. Hey. All right. So, um, the Atlantis Royal Dubai is a huge facility property. Um, I think there are seventy restaurants or over seventy restaurants. You've got a few Michelin starred restaurants in there. Um, there is a plethora of bars. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, like, <laughs> you know, that's such a huge undertaking. So can you give us a little bit about your background and like what led you to where you are today and running this huge, incredibly important program? Yeah. Well, yeah. If somebody told me this. Um you know, four years ago, then <laughs> this is where I was going to be. I've, I've never dreamt about this. Um, but uh, how it happened, I was um, in New York. Um, this is where I was living at a time three years ago, actually, just uh, three years ago. And it was still a COVID pandemic. And I was um, prepping for my master's sommelier exam in Dallas. So those times, again, they were, they were great, a lot of time for studying. And one day I just got approached by somebody from this company. And I was like, OK, let's take a little break and talk about, you know, to them, like Dubai. <laughs> like, what is this? So uh, but I've heard of Atlantis, even though, again, I don't know much or anything about Dubai. Like, I think everybody heard about Atlantis because um, of this man-made palm, which is uh, the first in the world. So I'm like, okay, let's start talking. And um, I, the more I talked, the more I found out about this whole project. I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. I don't know if anything like this exists. Maybe in Vegas, you know, if you're running the program for MGM or mm -hmm. um, Bellagio, that you have different concepts under your wing. So I've heard that at that time there was um, pre-opening for Atlantis the Royal. So uh, when they started listing the famous chefs and concepts, I, I was like a kid in a candy store. So two weeks after the exam, um, you know, my stuff was packed and um, I was uh, in Dubai. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Who have been some of your mentors and influencers along this professional journey of yours? Well, um, the journey... Um, was uh, has taken a serious toll once I moved to San Francisco because you know I lived half of my life in Serbia, and once I started working in restaurants, I met some amazing professionals uh, and people that definitely helped and influenced uh, my uh, my career and my path in wine. So Eugenio Jardim, for example, he's phenomenal. He's uh, um, brand ambassador for wines of Portugal. We worked together for a long time. Uh, David Lancy, Master Sommelier, who at that time, I don't think he was Master Sommelier when we first he was. met, but he, yeah, was. Uh, he was great. And we, um, yes, he, I, you know, we ended up working together, Catherine Fawless, of course, and then numerous colleagues and then winemakers, winery owners, uh, um, chefs, uh, again, mostly in San Francisco and then in New York as well, I, um, after almost 20 years in San Francisco, I moved to the East Coast just to get a different perspective and different experience. Um, and also it was great. Uh, it was a great experience there as well. And I worked with some, I worked with Thomas Keller and some amazing people there. I remember when you left San Francisco, I was very happy and sad at the same time. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> I know it was uh, yeah, it was surreal, but um, yes, yes, it was the end of a journey. Long. Yeah, definitely the end of a, of like one chapter, but like wow, like what a beginning to like this next one. Just yeah. incredible. So <laughs> the Atlantis Royal Dubai itself has like. 800 rooms and suites. It's got all these restaurants and bars. That is an incredible amount of people and individuals that are going to be drinking wine at any given time. Um, I would love to hear what, you know, a typical day is like, if there is a typical day, you know, like running such a, you know, large, prestigious wine program. Yes, so there are two resorts. So, like for example, today I'm in Atlantis the Palm, which is original resort, which was founded 14 plus years ago, and they have over 1,400 rooms here. And then the new resort, um, which was open over a year ago, is Atlantis the Royal. And Atlantis uh, the Royal is half of the um, half of it is uh, residences, private residences, and half of it is about. 750 rooms okay so <laughs> my typical day depends on um where where um you know where it's needed so for example right now we are next month we are launching two new bjorn franzen restaurants so it's it's a crunch time there's uh sommeliers just got on boarded so we are doing you know finalizing the wine list and uh, prepping the cellar and so on and so forth, final tastings. So there's a lot of work here. Um, there's some changes in the menu, for example, in one of the best restaurants here, it's called Oceano. Um, so again, it, it varies. So I generally try to spend two days here, three days there. So depending, again, what um, how busy we are and where they need me. Yeah, yeah. So typical days, yes, yes, I come here not too early. Um, so I try to beat the traffic also, which is uh, getting insane in Dubai. So I come here around 10 o'clock and then, um, you know, do the admin work and again, work with Psalms. Or like today, we have a group of new um, assistant head sommeliers and head sommeliers. So I do training for them. Um, then, you know, I don't really do uh, orders, but for example, Franzen, I, I've created a list and I'm still finalizing ordering the wines. And once everything is completed, then I hand it over to the team and they, they take it from there. So it's still, we are finalizing things, um, getting some last orders in and mm -hmm. yes. Um, and then uh, I also try to go and uh, see some of our restaurants in service. Um, just to see how service is going because it's it's quite a few like here we have <laughs> a lot over 50 I mean I don't go to every single one of them but just the fine them. Yeah. where where we have some again that's where I know that it's things are gonna be <laughs> generally okay but it's also many of them that we don't have it so I touch base with uh, the team with managers just see how everything is um, it's going. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's it like sourcing wine for so many properties? I mean, this is not just, you know, sourcing for one oh. Michelin star restaurant in New York, you know, yeah. say per se, that, you know, has, I don't know, maybe less than 150 covers a night for sure. You know, I mean, we're talking about the magnitude is just, I think going to be hard for a lot of people to grasp, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> how do you go about sourcing so, so much yeah, wine, so, so much good wine, like, you know, like luxury wine. Yeah, yeah. So, again, Atlantis is a very unique company. It is it is fantastic company, and um, there are so many advantages working for us. There are a lot of challenges. Um, first and foremost is that uh, Dubai has only two importers. So anything that you want to get is, this is what they offer you. But since... The first day I arrived here and today, I mean, I, I'm proud to say, you know, I think that uh, the programs in Atlantis also changed and influenced a lot of things in Dubai as well, because um, even the number of selections that we have today compared to then, you know, it's, it's huge. We have thousands and thousands of references. So, um, again, it all depends um, on, on a concept. So, and Franzen, for example, is going to have, I don't know, 30, let's say we start with 1,300 references. 
uh, 5,500 bottles in a cellar plus additional storages, etc., etc. But there are restaurants that have two, 300 wine selection. And uh, for those restaurants, again, majority of that backup storage is we have a centralized um, storage, like one in this resort and another one, another resort, and then every restaurant has its own cellar. So sourcing, again, I can generally start with building the program, building the list, um, then people take over and then we have, um, again, colleagues working in the beverage store. They're keeping the pars on high volume wines and, and again, it would be impossible for me to you know, take care of everything. Sure. And then sommeliers, again, then they're um, taking care of the list. Um, but I kind of started all, again, as I say, hand it over and overlook you know, if, if, okay, we need this, we need this. Sourcing is generally very difficult in Dubai. Um, and because we are on this palm, uh, there is an additional level <laughs> of, of difficulty because it's the most exclusive area in Dubai. Mm -hmm. So they have uh, a company, they have an additional distributor that only distributes wine on the palm. Wow. So anywhere else in Dubai, you can actually order directly from the importers. Uh, but we can't. We have to order only for this one company. So that delays things a bit. Sure. <laughs> but again, working for this company was really, really fantastic. So just uh, prepping for the opening of Atlantis the Royal, um, when I arrived here, you know, I noticed that we are missing a lot of selections from around the world, particularly from California. So um, the first thing was like, okay, we are missing this, 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 and this. And uh, my bosses sat down and they asked me like, okay, well, which wines would you like to bring? And again, not just from California, but anything else around the world. I'm like, okay, this is a, this is a nice exercise. Let's, let's play with this. Yeah. And I wrote down the list of about 1,600 um, wines. And I handed it to them and just jokingly, I'm like, okay, well, let's see what happens. <laughs> and then they sat down actually with the importers uh, and we, it was a huge project. I believe it or not, I'm still receiving wines that I requested in January, 2022. Uh, but they were supporting like me fully and we wanted to bring again, especially like uh, better Californian wines because our president at the time also was American. Um, so it's been a very, very interesting ride. And uh, like now, three years later, I have to say that selection of the wines are completely different in Dubai in general because a lot of those wines um, would be called special import because they're really just imported for us. And it's a very complicated process. Um, they ended up being uh, on um, supplies portfolios, the regular portfolios, and I am, you know, constantly in touch with them and, you know, giving them recommendations or if they travel to California, I give them directions where to go, who to see. Mm -hmm. um, they don't even know. Um, they're mostly British, some Australian, um, zero people from US in this uh, business. <laughs> so again, I, I feel like I'm an unofficial California wines ambassador here and uh, things are actually officially changing. We, we worked um, with the California Wine Institute. Mm -hmm. I actually meet somebody next month. Uh, there's a big project with just a book um, published. It's called My Food Story where they um, it was this collaboration with the different chefs, but also some of the sommeliers Then we were doing pairings for certain dishes. And it's very fun because um, the book is huge and it's going to travel all around the world and then end up in a white, white house. So it's fun. But again, that's another collaboration, for example, with Californian wines uh, and USDA. And then they, um, again, included a lot of chefs from the Middle East. That's and then sommeliers from both United States and Middle East as well. So it's fun. That's amazing. Well, of course, I'm a little biased and excited to hear that you're like an unofficial California yeah. wine ambassador, but I'm not surprised. Um, I'm also not surprised that you're influencing wine on a whole there in Dubai beyond the palms. And wow, that is like such a dream come true for so many wine program owners just be like here's my wish list ha 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 and then they're like okay like 
that is talk about a kid yeah. to candy store. That's pr that's incredible. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it was it was unbelievable. But you know, to be fair, we were opening uh, the entire resort, which had uh, you know nineteen different outlets. For example, Atlantis the Royal. So. Right now, like when we open in France, then I wish you know we could ask for much more. So we are still bringing some special wines. They are not yeah. currently in Dubai, but it's more reaching for older vintages, you know, or, or going um, to horizontals and so on and so forth. Um, because again, their portfolios are also changing. Um, mm. What is really available, for example, you know, the high, high end exclusive wines. No problem. You have them everywhere. You would be amazed what they have. You know, I had lunch with Bond the other day. There's Screaming Eagle, there's Cine Guanon, you know, you name it, all of them are here. And then there are some, you know, supermarket wines. So what is missing and what I wish there's um, more options for is that middle range when people really, really discover those little gems and, and the wines that, okay, like, you know, this is what... This is what really represents um, California. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, everyone, I mean, California only exports, I think something like 3% of its total wine that it makes. Um, like it's a very, very tiny, small amount that makes it outside of the US. Like there's just so much to discover that, you know, yeah, yeah for people to learn about, that's amazing. Some of the wines, again, I was, I was so thrilled, again, from the beginning, but you know, just one example, like um, Carlo Mondavi has Rain, his project with his brother, it's phenomenal wines, and nobody actually knew about them until, you know, they were featured in Wine Spectator, mm -hmm. but I saw the first, um, first vintage, even in San Francisco at Epic, so... And again, can be, you know, a lot of those smaller, not smaller, but unknown producers, like I'm happy to have, like, or Reese, or, you know, you name it, like Santa Barbara, a lot of uh, wineries from there. And then people got thrilled, and then these producers actually like, oh, you know, I'm in Dubai, here is a great reason to come over and visit, and then they discover different things. So things are happening again at a very fast paste this is uh, also what Dubai is known for like absolutely wow. absolutely wow so how big is the team that you manage I mean that's so many properties and you know obviously you can't do the tactical side right you have to have people doing that for you so mm -hmm. I mean <clears throat> how big is that team that you're working with so we have over 35 um, sommeliers right now mm -hmm. So again, some people are onboarding at the moment um, because again, it's a, it's a two large properties and a number of, of fine dining restaurants. So like we are around there and by the end of the year, it's gonna be um, 40. And then next year we are opening Carbone and other restaurants. So then yes. there's another four or five sommeliers there. So the number keeps growing again. Of course, people are moving, coming and going or even they transfer within the restaurants, which is also a great opportunity here uh, for the team. Because sometimes they start with, uh, you know, working in a casual place and they really want to learn and they have opportunity to grow. So that's something um, that it's really, really good for them. That's great. That's great. So in addition to that team of, of 35 Psalms, I mean, I can only imagine you're also interacting with countless chefs accounting guest services probably concierge and events like any anybody and everybody like under the planet there at the palm yeah. so how do you manage you know how do you manage all of those relationships and that people while just managing the wine itself well again it's it's all about relationship i mean in um, especially hotels i mean i learned so much uh it's been an incredible experience not just uh, because of what I do specifically, but just getting to know the whole way of, of working. So um, some things when you're used to do in just one restaurant, I'm like, okay, I receive the wines and I pay the invoices and I am programming the PLS system and so on and so forth. Here, you have department for that and then you have a department for that. So, but it's really, really interesting because then you got to meet so many of them and also the company is moving so you know you meet marketing team and you understand over the time what they're doing and then you meet the pr and then 
I need procurement and then I'm talking to IT and then there's entertainment team and there's design team. Uh, and now the latest thing that the company is doing is focusing much more um, on performances, on live performances. Oh. So that is uh, becoming another of the really, really important things. Martin Garrix is performing again um, in about a month or so. So, so it's very interesting. Again, of course, beverages and wines are present at almost all of you know all of these um, events, and so it's been it's been great.